Good, well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Saturday School Stone. My name is Dr. Fish. I am one of your ops. For, uh, I am your op and one of your casters for this wonderful match. I can't talk even though it's two in the afternoon. Um, and alongside me, I have my my co-host on both THL Pal and T and the Tavern Talk. I have Geranium Battle casting with me. Hello. Hello. Uh, it is lovely to be here. I uh, <laughs> I just um, ran quite a ways to to get here on time, so my <laughs> adrenaline is high, and I am pumped for this match. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I uh, I'm very surprised that you made it on time. I was fully I was fully ready to do the opening section by myself and have you come in for the matches. Um, I'm going to get in touch with the players. Just tell them know that I've started this stream. Um. Yeah. Uh, so right now we've got uh, quite a heated match on our hands. We've got um, Justin from always, you know, always just in time from Just Win uh, versus Reeb Obson, uh from F2L White. This is a legacy match, so we're gonna just see some conquest going on. Yep. Uh, but these guys are not only some of the um, the craziest. Uh, deck builders that I've seen in THL, you know, not quite Dankus Dad levels, but right, right up there. Uh, and then, um, not only that, they are two of the winningest players this season. Are. Justin, Justin's on a seven-week tear, whereas Ree Bobson is nine and one, uh, almost undefeated this season. Yeah. Um, and I believe, I believe these players did not face them. They didn't play in the regular season. I believe maybe they did. Uh, no, it was a switch swap. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Justin yeah. won against Myanadon, and uh, Ree Bobson won against um, Infinite. Infinite, yeah. So, first time these players are facing off in Legacy. These, I'm, I, I'm guessing these players have played each other in some other format potentially. Um, I mean, probably. Justin I did. think they may have played in Pro. Would be my guess, but I don't know. Uh, Justin's team did just eliminate Rebob's team in Hero last week, so at least yeah. in that case, Rebob has some uh, some vengeance. Oh to have yeah, on his they did. They barely. Uh... Yeah, that was a really good series between our two teams. Um, but uh, we have. Well, let's look at classes. Um, for the players, I don't have any ban updates yet. Um, but. So, uh, so if we're gonna have Robobson on the top of our screen, so I'll I'll start with him on on our left. Robobson has Demon Hunter, Druid Hunter, and Warlock, while Always Just in Time has Druid, Rogue, Shaman, and Warlock. Um, we're we're in this we're in a situation where I look at these classes, and we were discussing this before the cast, uh, before we went live here, that it's really difficult to tell what type of decks these players are gonna bring. I like. Planning, especially post post mini set, like there's like you can't planning is so difficult. Like you can make a game plan, you miss one little thing, and your plan's ruined, and you're and you're in a really bad position. Like and yeah. that's that might that might apply more to LHS than to Conquest. Conquest obviously just being a little bit different in format with. Uh, well, pretty much completely different in format and, and how you have to, how you can strategize. Yeah, and, and the strategy for this uh, could be very different based on what these players are bringing for decks for techs. Um, I mean, if Justin, yeah, you know, if Justin feels pigeonholed in with his warlock, I mean, Rebob could uh, just try and take advantage of that and bring some really aggressive classes uh, to try and. Um, to try and punish, you know, a certain, you know, a certain way that Justin is, is bringing, or yeah. he could even target the Shaman. Like, any one of Justin's classes could be a potential target for Rebob here. Uh, and we see, actually, um, Justin bringing a Shaman, uh, something that is classically very strong, but a little bit weak to Warlock, whereas Rebob not bringing the Shaman and instead just bringing the Warlock. So maybe he's already uh, with a little bit on the front foot here on maybe... Um, targeting that shaman mm -hmm. definitely but we'll have to see i mean the bands will very much uh will, will give us a, a very big update as to what these players are fearing and playing 
um, especially the druid, since there's two very different types of druid right now, aggressive and controlling. Yeah, definitely. It's that's gonna be that could be a big big uh, question mark for how you approach how each player approaches the their classes that they are, have uh, to go off of. Um, if I'm Rebob, I'm probably looking at a warlocky type. Like I, I want to take advantage of of the warlock. Um, just the classes tend to be able to do that. Uh, maybe the, the the druid from Rebob. If if he goes after the warlock, it's it's very much like uh, telegraphing what type of uh, what type of druid you're probably gonna see. Uh, hunter not so much both face hunter and quest hunter are very solid into the into the warlock um maybe if it's que if the if the shaman gets left up then it might then it's probably a quest hunter i wouldn't believe i would not leave shaman up if i wasn't bringing slow druid and quest hunter um just because burn shaman will be will be any aggro beats aggro decks very very uh with not too much issue yeah, uh, because of all the clear options that the deck has. Yeah, the landslides especially. Oh yeah. Um, now with Vorlock, uh, it's also you know a very big question of what type of Warlock Justin will bring because if it's the Owl TK Warlock, uh, mm. then Rebob's aggression from a Face Hunter yes um, would get or punished. would get very punished. But if it were the Quest Warlock, then maybe his aggression from a um, Beast Druid would get very punished with the mm. Soul Rings and everything like that. So, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, we even, like, we could see some some very weird Warlock builds. I think, um, I mean, it's it's not very common, but maybe even a Tick Lock. Yeah, I, uh, I, I saw, I was playing Ladder just uh, yesterday, and I, I was, um, I, I went up against, like, some build that was, it was, like, ticketed, it was, like, just a deck that was built to corrupt Ticketus and create a bunch of them, essentially, I think was the point of the deck. It it was very... It was a interesting... I think if that deck had gotten going against me, I think it would have been a bit of a... Could have been a bit of an issue, but... I think uh, that deck... Like, Ticketus, Warlock, Control, and Warlock can absolutely work uh, against yep. Aggression because it just has so many clears. But it... it but even then, I, I feel like I'd be more expecting one of the two more common versions of Warlock. Maybe, maybe, hey, maybe, maybe a Fatigue Lock type deck could also do it um, instead of an Owl. But I feel like Owl is just better than Fatigue into Aggro. Personally, uh, it's close. It might be a little. It might be pretty close. And I mean, hey, you know, if Rebob is bringing a Kazakhstan druid yeah uh, then playing ticketus right after they kazakasan and um milling their deck just out. removing their entire deck yeah. uh no treasures for you means that uh mm -hmm. it might be a bit of a hard time i mean you know if you're telegraphing that you have ticketus though maybe there's stuff that rebob can do to play around that but yeah. you know we'll have to see what exactly these players are bringing for, in a second for sure um, yeah looks like we're gonna looks like we're gonna have some bands come in okay cool they're they're um they're almost ready to ban. Um, we'll get them ready and send them off pretty much as soon as I have all the information I need. Just just to keep them, just to make sure they're not waiting. Um, and what, I know we just talked about all these possibilities, but what do you have any inkling about what these players might ban? How, like with strats and like how that would affect, because of the strategies we kind of talked about. Yikes. Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think the thing that's hardest to plan around is probably the Druid. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's probably going to be a pretty common ban. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, Rogue is kind of one note. So, um, you know, if you if you feel like you're going to face a Poison Rogue, you can just tech in your Vipers. If you feel like you're going to face a Quest Rogue, you can tech in answers to that. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like uh, I feel like Rebob's probably going to ban the Druid. Uh, and then from Justin's side, I mean, um, man, DH is incredibly powerful if you know you aren't going to have a druid to fight it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to say probably the, the DH or, the, or once again that druid. Um, mm -hmm. 
Honestly, there's so many different things Justin could target here, though. Yeah. Um, I think I I think my opponent I think Diamond last week had a very similar lineup in Hero, and he actually ended up banning my my Hunter. Mm. Um, because Hunter, because at least in LHS, my Hunter could have completely swept him. Um, but yeah, we do have the two bands in, and um, so you're right. Rebob went with the Druid band, but actually Justin went with the Hunter band. Okay, yeah. So it definitely makes sense. Um, a, a a quest hunter against that specific lineup is very powerful. So I don't blame Justin for wanting to remove it. Um, even I guess even because especially if he's if it's a slower druid, it wouldn't have been as as good. But maybe he expects to not have the druid, so he likes to get rid of that. Um, so yeah, we have our bands. Um, the players yeah. are all ready. Uh, and... So that's just the question of what will come up first. Oh um, yeah, I. Hmm. And I think that I think that's maybe a, a bit of um, a bit of some good information to. Uh, you know, to maybe hold back exactly what type of druid you're bringing. So I think maybe Rebob's going to start with the, the Warlock. We might even see a Warlock mirror here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be interesting, for sure. Um, just going to wait for... Just going to wait for eyeballs. <clears throat> for those uh, watching the stream, we're going to have Justin on the bottom and Rebob on the top of our screen. So, yeah. We're going to have some fun... The fun action. I believe this is the first. This is the first match. I believe. Now the thing is that there could be a match play that I don't that we don't know about that just hasn't been reported. But uh, I think that Skirt is uh, is facing against um, Totino's Pizza right now as well. All right, so we have so, two matches going on right now. Yeah, that one cool. that one might get reported while we're casting this, but okay. um, this is this also could be the very first match, depending on how long that other one goes. For sure. Right. And uh, eyeballs up. Indeed. Okay, now uh, this is an incredibly important match for Just Win. Uh, they are an undefeated team uh, going into this um, semifinals match uh, versus. F12 White, their rival is one of the other buy teams. Uh, so both incredibly powerful teams and, uh, you know, very worthy to be here, but only one of them can actually make it into the next round to finals. Yes. And for F2 L, the, the team besides their wild team has had uh, quite the amount of issues making it into finals minus their hero. Minus F2 L Black last season in hero. Every other team has a Fallen in in semifinals. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. This is this will be a quite quite a good one. We've got uh we've got the semifinals curse on the line versus undefeated team. Uh, Justin, Justin, the, this squad of Justins, and it is a it, it is indeed a uh, a quest. It is indeed. I'm um, sorry, stumbling over my words. A quest handlock versus a quest fell dh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's also teching a uh, cult neophyte at least. So maybe. Uh, that could be a reason why Justin didn't want to ban the Druid, is um, just knowing that if it's a controlling version, he can stuff it up with a, a Cult Neophyte. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, hey, the Quest Fell DH is incredibly common right now. Um, one of the main things that beats it is Druid, and Druid got banned. So, uh, yeah, makes sense why Rebob brought it. Uh, definitely. Um, it just seems to have... It's a deck... That has decent has some decent matchups, uh, or better matchups into other decks that regular Fell DH just wouldn't have the, the matchup into. Like would just have a terrible time into. Um, in a couple of cases, which is why it's become very popular. Uh, meanwhile, this is a pretty uh, decently slow start here for Justin. He's just tapping. He's he uh, we see the mutinous tech as well. Uh, but trading back his Viper. So showing that he has teched his decks. He has at least teched his uh, handlock with Viper for a potential um, uh, Poison Rogue matchup. Yeah. Uh, Battleground Battlemaster. Actually, no, actually no Poison Rogue, but maybe uh, something else. 
Battle Round Battlemaster, a very classic quest handlock deck uh, card. Yeah. I mean, you know, maybe he uh, is a bit interesting when he still has it. Means that his, you know, his big giants and his uh, Netherons is still gonna see play here. Whereas Mutinous is actually very interesting. Uh, I don't think Rebob is going to be playing uh, the classic target for Mutinous, the um, Ilganoth. But uh, I think we might see it eat a, a, a Magtheridon, hopefully. Yeah, could get, could go could get a Magtheridon, could get uh, a Jace, and Rebob going through his going through drawing his cards. He's going to go ahead and juice up a bit of his Jace pool here with um, a Fury to remove the three four. This is uh, I don't know about this decision. This means that his Fury is going to be locked at two damage instead of being able to juice it for four yeah. uh, later. Nah, I can see that for sure. It's definitely... He, he probably... Um, just wants to remove that threat because he doesn't have super... At least in his hand currently, he didn't have great removal tools. So he might have just decided to go with go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and Immawara that. There's no real... Uh, and no already... huge threat, but I ah hmm. swinging using with a the, second with, weapon. Swinging the warblades. Um, I don't think the warblades is maybe that important to this matchup as something else as like some other cards are to this matchup. Um, Justin has nine cards in hand, so he would mill playing Dreadlich Tamson. So, um, not sure exactly what he's gonna want to do here. He's kind of in an awkward position where most of his hand costs six or more. Double Battlegrounds Battlemaster is not something I'm used to seeing in these decks. So we're just going to see a Baron Scavenger. Yeah. Oh, and there's the Magtheridon. If Magtheridon doesn't see play right now, oh my god, this mutinous could be mm, It has. It's a, it's a, it's a one in... Okay. One I in was, three. I was going to say it's a one in three regardless, because there are two. There are definitely two. Although... Things. Oh no, he, okay, so Rebob's just going to glide the hand away. Okay. Okay. So good plays by Rebob. He doesn't... His hand's not great right now. There's no way to trigger Mactheridon, so we'll just go ahead and, and toss it all back. Oh, well, Mactheridon's right back again. And, there's so. act and it's actually activatable now. Not not now, but next turn it'll be it'll be able to be activated, and Rebob's going to go ahead and remove the 6-6 six, six from the board. Or, or, no, we didn't see a top deck to <laughs> Mutinous. <laughs> Oh yeah, top deck mutinous would have been crazy for Justin. You're correct. I didn't look at his. I didn't look at Justin's hand. Okay, um, but at all uh, there. Altar fire. Altar fire is very interesting here. Um, means that he's playing uh, maybe more of a, a mill warlock strategy, just a tiny bit, or maybe he's trying to counteract the um, some of the aggressive strategies, trying to get to, to ten cards faster. Not entirely sure. Yeah, he's a decent bit away from um from ten cards. Wow! Oh, curse of agony! Curse of agony attack. Okay, so okay. uh, that's definitely going to uh, be a big hamper on the quest of DH tr attempt to draw through the rest of the deck at the end. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But yeah, uh, Rebop's just going to go ahead and activate his Magtheridon. And we don't quite see a, uh, a good way for Justin to get rid of this. I mean, uh, he is going to be able to backfire and alter a fire um, if yeah. he can find a Bloodshard Bristleback. Uh, that almost removes it. Mm -hmm. It just puts Justin so low when he does that. Um, with the backfire, it sets him to, sets him to lethal range of... Um, yeah, I mean, if he can find the blood shard, uh, which he doesn't, um, I was gonna say he heals for nine yes. this turn off the uh, the touch and the blood shard, but uh, didn't find it. So yeah, so now player. so now he's gonna he's gonna have to he's gonna heal off here actually off of the the quest, um, but it's gonna leave him at exactly um, wow he got both he got two Magtheridon wardens that's the worst yeah. possible draws he can play these giants but. He's he can throw he can play the giants and not die because then the um then there won't be free free hits for the fell barrage. Oh, no. Is he free? 
Yeah, the uh, the little Hellfire workers also. Oh, he tapped into lethal. Oof. Yeah. So that's a bit unfortunate, uh, but Rebob's Demon Hunter uh, gets through in this case. So one to nothing starts for uh, yeah for Mister F two L. Yeah, I mean, hey, the DH was very favored into just about everything. So yes, uh, it really not, was. <laughs> not unexpected to see this happen, but let's see if Justin can rebound in the next fight yeah. here. Maybe you're going to see that Warlock just come right back against the pop, probably the other Warlock. For sure. Rebob is definitely really well up on 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 Q ordering and trying to look for the best possible matchups. Um so I assume he'll he has I assume he'll have some plan after the first game. A lot of times players don't have much of a plan for their first Q, but um but we'll see how they come out in the second game. Okay, and I wonder if uh, Justin will ever get to activate that Curse of Agony. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. Or if it's going to be a secret to Rebob the oh, entire time. Oh, it's the Rebob special. I call it the Rebob special. But uh, this is Conjur This is Anaconda Druid. Ah, okay. Yeah, the, I mean, the spammy, hey, the spammy Arcanist gives. It's either it could be maybe Spammy Arcanist has made its way into Kazaka's injury, but I feel like it hasn't. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like Arcanist fits that. in like either Abominable Lieutenant Ramp Druid or like, or it's Chondra. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Spammy Arcanist was like a. A side tech back in ramp druid a while ago <laughs> yeah it was but, um, when aggro was pretty rampant so you could uh it would help with that matchup a ton you know uh i'm sorry i'm just lagging a little bit behind here for some oh, reason no problem mulligans have been completed justin has a decent start for himself he has two uh he has both tour guys yeah, it's always something yeah. good to see. Yeah, and, and having Cult Neophyte in his deck too, we saw that before, mm -hmm. uh, is going to be probably pretty good into the um, the Anaconda Druid. Mm -hmm. you yep. be Starting What's Jerry Rick Carpenter. Uh, pull out Nourish. So, Rebob has one of the two cards he really wants, which is his Overgrowth. And he'll have to look after this for... Uh, He'll have to be looking afterwards for things like Malagos and Alignment, and most importantly, Celestial Alignment. Um, meanwhile, Justin will just tap and will likely um, likely just end his turn here, unless he feels like he wants to play a tour guy, but I, I don't think he's going to want to do that. He's just going to end. So Rebob will play uh, Moonlit Guidance right away. Picks up Lightning Bloom. Jerry Rig and Scenarian. I think he might just. Oh, I don't know. Kind of interesting. Mm. He has some choices here. Yeah, I, I feel like you scenarian... just don't really want. Maybe you don't want Scenarian Ward as much, but maybe you do. I don't really know. So I mean, the Scenarian will will definitely increase his uh his killing potential once he gets to the Anaconda turn. Yeah. Um, but the Lightning Bloom will get him there faster. Agreed. I think Jerry Rig's like the only thing you don't want to pick here. I think you can make a case for Bloom or a case for Scenarian Ward. Um, Rebob definitely taking his time with this choice. I mean, actually, the Jerry Rig isn't that bad either because you can get uh, Nourish to be split. Yeah, again. Um, yeah. And that gives you uh, both really good mana ramp options after the, um, the alignment. Everything uh, alignment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so one mana gain two mana plus one mana draw three cards, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually crazy. Uh, yes, it, it really is. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. Um, so just in this turn, probably just t so taps and plays tour guide. Oh, Germination picked up, but we're likely just to see. Uh, the, the overgrowth just ripped here. Wow. 
um, <laughs> this is this is unfortunate. I didn't think this was going to happen again, but uh, the same thing is happening to me as uh, last time I cast it. Where oh no! It's just not letting me watch. Oh man. <laughs> Um, if you need me to stream to Discord, I can. Uh, yeah, that might just be helpful here. Okay. Right, so no CA picked up yet for Robobson. He's he doesn't really have many draw cards here for it. Um, we're gonna see Sol. He's gonna go Solar Lunar draw cards here from his uh, from his split. Nourish. He really has to find Celestial soon here. He has a couple more chances to find it. Um. But he does he does get a a second he does get another nourish which is uh very very good um so justin's life tap being free he'll be able to complete the first part of his quest and uh looking in a not so bad spot here honestly as the as the warlock because there's no alignment and even when alignment comes down he will he'll be able to play a few things here uh especially because he has goldshire knoll in his hand which will automatically cause zero and if he draws giants here, then it could get even even more dicey. He doesn't have any of those currently, any more giants or anything like that. But yeah, well, it, it definitely the, the 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 I will say I think that this cult neophyte is going to be massive because it's, it's just going to much. stop Robobson from doing anything for a turn at least. Yeah, so uh, whether or not uh, Justin can really just pile on enough pressure uh, right after the alignment gets played, that's going to maybe decide the game because yeah. um, Rebob, if Rebob can deal with that board that yeah. Justin puts out right after the alignment, uh, then Rebob is probably just going to win. Yeah. Uh, as well, we can see, uh, he Justin... finds the alignment, but he's going to find it yeah. into death if he does it. So he's, yeah. he, he's honestly in position guff i don't guff does not save because of because of potential bgbm rebob is ripping this and just saying he doesn't have it is essentially what he has to do here um, yep just there, trying to set up for as good of a turn as he possibly can but with no anaconda in his hand mm -hmm. uh that's just going to be all she wrote yeah definitely so this will be justin going up or justin tying the series at one getting his warlock through um so yeah it's really well played it's just there it is right in the hand right on time right on time in the on the left side of the hand of course i'm very very well done to apply the pressure when he did knowing going into an anaconda or going into the possible alignment turn wanted to not sit and wait um very smart um for those who i mean anaconda too it's not super popular but um if you do run into it, <laughs> there's there's kind of how you beat it, per, how you do well with it into uh, into warlock. Um, I I think yeah. that this that I think that that was Anaconda's probably worst match. That was Anaconda's worst matchup out of these classes. I'm gonna guess. Not a hundred percent sure about that. Um, I don't know that much about. I think Anaconda's super favored into like a burn shaman. Um, it's just kind of making shaman play stuff a lot slower is. Especially if it's Quest Shaman, then the overloads are an issue. Um, if it's, it's Doom also, Hammer, then you just try to gain a bunch of armor. Yeah, and, and in that way, it's also um, a little bit favored into the Poison Rogue yes. as well. Uh, of just how much armor can you gain. Um, it is one of the weirder matchups, though. So mm -hmm. it can be uh, extremely favored for the Poison Rogue, just depending on what hand that Druid draws. Agreed. Okay, now we're going to finally see what Shaman this is. Yeah, Although it's going up against its worst uh, matchup, as, you know, as Rebob is uh, is very good at, at queuing here. Yeah, Rebob queuing the, uh, queuing okay. his uh, Owl Lock. Yeah, so most yeah. likely Owl, TK, Warlock, and then, I mean, hey, it's Quest Shaman. We know that much. Yes.
very interesting decision for Justin here, whether he keeps Sleep Breaker and the Multicaster, uh, just because, you know, that's going to be the uh, the Frost spell, um, and then he can probably pick up a Nature spell along the way. However, I would probably just pitch all of it except for the quest, just because uh, you don't have any of your uh, early game uh, or, uh, you know, the card draw, like the Guidance or the yeah. um, the Go-Go Fast, like the, uh, the Bloom. <laughs> yeah, this... This matchup is definitely. Oh. oh. Uh, instead, he ropes it, which. Oh, never mind. Okay. He did, in fact, mull. No, yeah, he did mulligan. It's just difficult because we can't tell from the spectator what he's mulliganed. <laughs> but so he kept the sleep breaker. And he has Viper in hand. That Viper will be very useful in a few turns here. So yeah, move we... a rod. We see, um, uh, we see Viper for uh, for Rebob's rod, but then Rebob just has draws the, the has, other one. He has the re-rod. Yeah, he can just re-rod right after. It, I will say it is a lot, is a very, very painful to have to, to have to play rod on six after you've played it on, on five. Because you're losing a turn of, of drawing. Of drawing extra cards, especially if he wants to hold, especially because the backfire looks like it's being held for rod. Yeah, I wonder if uh, second rod, if Rebob will like hold it for just a little bit longer to make sure that he has draw to pair with it. Yeah, that would make a lot of um, sense. But it's maybe a bit too slow. Mm -hmm. We'll see how quickly Justin is also getting out there. Yeah, he's he's not overloading at all. No, he has no overload cards. Um, I I think it's probably Sleep Breaker, and you can windchill, or you can Hero Power and win, or and use the windchill from deck. Knowing that you have the Sleep Breaker. Um, I, I think it's going to be Sleep Breaker and then Wind Chill it. Okay. Um, yeah, that would make just, sense. Uh, I mean, playing out the uh, the Hero Power is just, uh, it's not any amount of pressure. Uh, whereas at least the Sleep Breaker does require your opponent to use something Ooh. on it. Oh, Justin using the one created by the other Sleep Breaker. Okay, yeah. I've, yeah. So both of those are created by... Uh, the Sleep Breakers, that makes sense. Um, cool. So, uh, Noel picked up for Robobson. He's, you know, he's, he's plenty satisfied to just play out, play that out and, uh, attack and put that pressure on the board. He knows that there is oh. another Windchill in the hand. Ooh. That is a really good pickup for Justin. Now he gets a Nature Spell if he wants it. Uh, for the multicaster, if he wants to play multicaster this turn, uh, and um, as long as he doesn't play another piece of overload, or if he does play another piece of overload, uh, then the viper will be playable next turn in that rod. Yeah, so I I think we'll just see the the feral spirits here, very likely. Um, it lines up pretty well into it into a frozen five one. Uh, he's also look. He's actually gonna complete. I think he'll might even complete quest here. Honestly. All right. He's gonna leave that for uh, next turn. He's gonna leave completing it for next turn. Then. No, he's going to have just as big of a turn as he possibly can next turn by playing Bloom. He also unlocks his mana crystal. Yes, exactly. He'll complete that first part of quest, and he'll have a lot of mana to work with. <clears throat> yeah. So now he has seven mana with which to play both multicaster. And the Viper. Interesting that he's playing a Viper second. If he plays a Macaw, that means that will also be an option for him to uh, remove another rod. I've heard of it. Definitely. There's Guidance. Guidance is a very key card in this map. In any game of Quest Shaman, you always want your Guidance. Um, he's ju he just, or Justin's going to debate whether he wants to trade into the 5-1 um, in this situation. I... I could see either way, seeing as your board, you can either say my opponent's going to potentially clear his own menu, but I don't think he would, obviously, because he, he has to just kind of think, does Rebob have the way to clear this board? Which he does. We can see that with the with the Moark plus uh, Grimoire Sacrifice. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And he's going to greet, and he's going to play Viper and remove the rod. <clears throat> Um, in this in this case, though, it does uh, trading does mean that the Moark has to die, um, or I guess actually never mind the, uh, the I, armor vendor is gonna die. I, yeah, I think we're gonna see armor vendor here. Yeah, so maybe vendor first, and then we're gonna and then we're gonna arbor and we're gonna play the Moark here. 
there's no difference in there's no difference in order there. So, you know, just deciding to play out the armor first. Um, I think we're likely to see the wild paw caverns here potentially. Um, we see an insta. Uh, pick of both here, and uh, yeah, I mean, clearing off the Moar and playing out the Caverns. Caverns Shaman has been so dominant this season. Yeah, while in Wild Paw Caverns, I don't remember if it was played that much in Quest Shaman, but it just we've seen the strength of the deck overall, how, how strong it is, um, with decks like Bird Shaman. Um, the Charge Call would get a six cost card for Justin. I don't think he needs to worry too much about that. Um, and it, it doesn't even necessarily matter. Rebob's never going to attack, but obviously dealing damage face is nice. We're at two of three. We could see um, we could see the Serpent Shrine Portal, which would uh, activate the next part of quest. Get a, an extra minion on the board here. He hit a yeah. humongous <laughs> Razor Leaf. That, well, maybe he's teching Silence. It is impressive for it sure. It is indeed uh, impressive. To get twelve stats for uh, for a three drop. Whoa. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Could be even. Could be one more. Ah, uh, didn't buff it. Okay. Yeah, it could be a thirteen of stats that does nothing <laughs> because it's because it's silence until it's silenced. It can't attack. Yeah, is... but might have. Uh... <laughs> Might have been interested for uh, for Justin to try for uh, the draw into Gloom plus Viper last turn, but, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I mean obviously it's a very out you know uh, far away play. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe he runs Showstopper and then it can attack. By by them by maybe he runs it. I'm talking about Robobson running it in his owl. <laughs> Oh. But I don't I don't think that it's that's not much of a tech is it? I know it's some I know it's run against 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 shaman decks general but that might be more generally in um in handlock than in yeah. owl. There's no miracle priest to run it against but there could yeah. be a quest rogue uh to run it against if Rebob thinks that that would be a bad matchup for him. Yeah. I feel like that's not as uh Okay, we're seeing, the eight, we're seeing the first charge call for an 8-drop. I can't see what he has for options. <laughs> so we'll see what he picks. It's oh. the is an 8-attack rusher. <laughs> That's an 8-attack. It's an 8-mana, eight 8-8. Eight, eight. If it hit attacks and it honorably kills, it deals 8 damage to the enemy hero. So... Yeah, so if there was a, uh, a giant on Reloved's side, we obviously see that there was not... Yes. Uh, then that could have done something, but agreed. Yeah, now Thalnos with some healing is is on the menu. Out, you can you can even go ahead and owl here too. Um, yeah. Right now, Rebob is basically in a uh, phylactery waiting room. Yes, he is. Yeah, so we're we're gonna see him get to remove this with. A mortal coil potential with a mortal coil on that eight two, which would draw a card. Um, can also go ahead and trade wicked shipment if he wishes. Uh, yeah, but there's there's just so much, so, uh, so many things that could get done here. Could have even Tamsin ahead of time if he wanted to, but I think we're gonna go for the Tamsin phylactery play, obviously, or uh, big, what would look like the Tamsin phylactery play. Big question from my mind. I mean, a an owl has not been killed yet. So okay, yeah, we're gonna see a tempo owl. Uh, right now saying you don't have devolving missiles in your deck and uh maybe justin doesn't yeah you're right maybe he doesn't and we can't see one in hand which means unless he multicasters for it really isn't then <laughs> uh, primordial studies oh boy i'm getting the getting the yeah. uh, i can't see what they're half i can't see what they have to choose from we get a thalnos <laughs> now finally multicast with three draws Yes. Uh, three chances for that devolving missiles doesn't have Ooh, it. Okay. Hard running an Earth Alley. Okay. That's a tech against. I'm assuming that's probably for a nice poison rogue. Just stop it from hitting face. But there's no poison rogues there. from Rebob. There's. Oh no! Sorry, not poison rogue. I don't. Then I guess it. I don't know uh, what the Earth uh, Alley is there for. Then it's kind of interesting. 
could be could be something against well okay i mean it's not gonna be very good against the um alignment druid because if you overload at all is, against alignment is druid, there lethal kill you. uh phylactery just drawn uh, i mean you have to kill off your own owl uh which you can against the four ones so mm -hmm. hmm. there's definitely I enough there's definitely enough here um to there's definitely enough here to uh remove yeah. the board completely and deal yeah. all the damage pretty sure this is lethal um just going that to going that going face is really nice because <laughs> I mean, there matter. is there is um wicked shipment for two uh armor vendor uh there is moarg as well moarg will just clean clear a board and if he's gonna double if he's gonna double phylactery then it's just lethal because yeah. we're gonna see Mo we're gonna be able to see moarg plus school spirits to end the game so as long as this doesn't rope out well can't moarg plus uh school spirits but can school spirits oh, twice he just so. school spirits twice you're right yeah i i hope this didn't rope or could even uh go with the, he didn't um, rope it okay it's it's just the game being uh, a bit slower so that makes sense there is potential here that one doesn't hit the face but i think it but i mean after that happens then you've got more than enough damage going yes. to the face after so so there yeah, you go is... owl lock gets a win rebob's up two to one okay so it's all down to rebobson's anaconda druid um i mean hey justin bringing overload shaman essentially if he ever overloads and rebob just says alignment then that's the end of the game. Yes. Because uh, it's this Justin is a very this matchup isn't great. It's not great for the quest shaman because of alignment. But I mean so, that that's that's very watering it down. Actually, how the matchup goes. Me saying that. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's obviously options for um, you know overdraft and ways yeah. to remove the uh, the overloaded mana, but. Still, the idea is there that, uh, that it is quite favored. Yes. Something that's good to note for that matchup is to... It's... You want to align... is like, you can hold your alignment and just try to... Unless your opponent's getting really far ahead along in their quest, you can... You could just try an alignment when they overload. Because then they can't do it. Because then they don't do anything, and then you have your turn where you get to do things. Like, exactly. It's, it's def that's definitely the kind of, like, the game plan... That the deck has to play around. I mean, technically, yeah, because you're you just want to leave your opponent with zero mana in their first turn in that specific matchup. I doubt we're gonna see the shaman here. We're gonna see the rogue. Yeah. Okay, so now we get to finally see what type of rogue this is. Uh, and it looks like it's probably just a, a, a standard quest rogue standard here. Standard quest like, rogue. Interesting text, but we didn't see any vipers from rebob so the poison rogue could have come out but uh, yeah. he didn't in this case i mean um <laughs> maybe the informant is a little bit early to the party but uh, you know we got sx7 cards on curve play them out yeah All right, I, I think Justin will just keep the operative and quest, and we'll see uh, Tenwu and Informant get uh, removed. While I think Rebob will probably, yeah, it looks like he's got his, either that was a handy mulligan into, or he just decided to full keep. Yeah, um, in this case, I mean, uh, Justin using his full allotted thinking time yeah. is uh, very good for him uh, to be able to plan many turns in a, in advance uh, yeah as you definitely should i mean there's very few turns until and now rebob as you can see has uh just about the strongest combo available to him the anaconda and the alignment already yeah he's already picked up his bloom so he can really go for an early he could technically go for an early alignment but i think more i think more he could go for an early scenarian ward potentially here yeah, we'll see if he draws his uh, germinations. Yeah, germination will be a big, a big card here. 
Uh, with three mana, you just play the Moonlit Guidance for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I like the Solar, definitely. So we will see. There is Justin does have a decent amount going for him. He, he's going to be able to complete the first part of his quest and see what Gizmo he gets first. Biomatic. That's okay. pretty good. He can decide what Rebob gets to draw. Uh, but unfortunately, he can't decide uh, that Rebob gets to draw something all that bad because uh, those are all, all three good. Are very good. Yeah. I think I'd probably pick Scale just because it costs the most. Yeah, it's also but not a name. Looks spell. like he's gonna go. I think he picked Jerry Rig. It looked like on my screen. Yeah. 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 So. We're just gonna see an early wow. alignment. Wow, he's going for it. Okay. And, I mean, uh, he does. I mean, he does have the turn. He doesn't have mana next turn though, so that is a big factor. Yeah, this could just be. I mean, he does this, obviously see this that is, he's gonna. This be able can to backfire survive. really badly now. But if he survives those turns. Yeah, if uh, he survives the turns, but the but the there's a battlegrounds battlemaster. <laughs> yeah, I think we. I think the. I mean, the battlegrounds battlemaster is the most damage. Um. Now, is it quite lethal? Actually, yes, it is. Um, yeah. yeah. Justin, to play your Battlegrounds Battlemaster, it's a lethal. Yes. Uh, Rebob was waiting to potentially... Uh, yeah, he sees it. Potentially play the Anaconda into the Solar Eclipse and the Scenarian Ward. Yeah, I would have... Uh, I would have liked to have seen... I would have liked to have seen him go for the... For the, uh... Scenarian Ward here. Just because... Scenarian... Just because, um... I don't want to be overloaded when I play alignment ever, personally, but it's, I mean, he has another, he has one more game on it, he has to beat the quest shaman, he's feeling pretty confident, Justin, um, actually not going for it, but I think he'll get it next turn, it, it, yeah. it, it should still be fine next turn, Rebob uh, can't yeah, do was... anything and there's plenty enough damage on board with, uh, the, yeah. with it. I think, uh, I think this was strictly a misplay just because, um, Justin introduced the two drop into the game, and that could have uh, really done some bad things for him. Uh, I don't know every two drop, but well, there Justin is no doom. There is no doomsayer, so I will I will say that uh, it did not backfire in that capacity. Yeah. So. Uh, but it uh, worked out for him. Gets that win, and now it's going to be Quest Shaman versus Anaconda Druid. Uh, yeah. Heavily favorite Rebob here, but. We could see what Justin's exactly going to bring to the table. Yeah, I think one thing that's so important. Uh, is understanding how to win these matchups. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I, 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 I think, think if Justin, Justin knows how to, if Justin can like kind of realize how important tempo was in that last matchup, which I'm sure he can, then he might be able to say, "Well, if I just tempo out these things, that this druid can't deal with it, even if they get the early, even if they get the early, like alignment." Right, we have game five. Get those game fives out in chat. Spend your five hundred points. We've got Robobson on the Anaconda Druid, and always just in time on the Quest Shaman. Ooh, and an overgrowth from Rebob is really going to speed out that uh, that alignment. If, yes. uh, if Justin ever overloads. But the overdraft is nice to counteract. Overdraft, overdraft is definitely nice. I think the main issue is just is just that it really stalls the quest completion of the shaman because it's really only playing one or one or so things per turn and the lightning bolt to cost one. So they're really only netting you. You're only netting yourself one uh sorry, one mana playing those. Yeah, and uh, we also see Justin is not able to get his quest reward. Oh. Early. In fact, he's, um, yeah, he has no over uh, overload cards still. Mm -hmm. So he can't discount the quest reward down to one, meaning it's yeah. going to be extremely expensive after the alignment comes out. Definitely. So, and I think Justin's almost just playing this for, like, he, he played out the, uh, he just played his Fireheart. So he... And I, I don't know exactly what he's going to pick. He might go for the wind chill. Uh, he, he might consider that Hex could be something in the future, potentially. But 
I, I think if you're playing Hex, then, like, I think it, it probably isn't the best in general, even post-alignment, because there's probably way too many big things on board to actually do that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe if Zen Teemo was still in the game, uh, yeah. we could see X, Hex hit more, but it's just not sure. going to be right. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, gotta, we get to coin stop. out the Arbor up. Oh, sorry, coin out the overgrowth. Oh my yeah. gosh. I'm thinking a different deck. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Man. So, there Justice. is not a way. there The Spammy Arcanist cannot remove this board. But, oh, there is alignment. <laughs> it's just, does he really want to overgrow? He can overload yep. into this a little easier because there's no threat of Battlegrounds Battlemaster winning the game. No. You, you just get your alignment down as, as quickly as possible, and then you just draw through your entire deck as fast as possible after you get that Agreed. overgrowth. Yeah. Just. You're gonna have so oh, many more Earth cards go played. hard. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Justin can't parlay that that Earth Ellie into uh, clearing up his uh, crystals, so mm -hmm. the Earth Ellie would completely remove his next turn. Yes, don't think we're gonna see it. Rob could probably see like wind chill on the on the on the totem, uh, something like that. Because if it does win, if he does wind chill that, then it would become unfrozen anyways because it didn't well, attack actually maybe no the earth elemental is actually very good here it's going to get the seven damage through regardless it does mean you skip your turn two but your opponent's already skipping their next turn yeah so robobson does have a turn this next turn his overload should go away here um but actually no Justin's, sorry Justin's no this is a turn after yeah six. uh justin's going to be able to set him down to six because Rebob's missing his next turn, so that means the um, Earth Elemental and the uh, Caverns Minion and the well, and the two minions that are already on board will all be able to attack for sixteen total. I mean, this is maybe just too much damage. Yeah, I think Justin. I think Justin's calped that out in his head, and he's just said, "I'm gonna play Earth Deli. I don't have a turn next turn, but do I need it? I don't think I need it. I have so much damage on board, and Robobson doesn't have a turn now. So he just so Robobson's gonna play from. He, he will have a chance to do a lot, potentially. But as long as Justin doesn't hero power, and because he can't, and get a one cost, then the board can't go away. Yeah, so I mean... So we're going to have to see we, a massive... We're, we see the Malad Ghost. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't think that, that Rebob has enough. Oh, that's actually a very good um, uh, start to it, though, is, is getting the Mana Crystals, but he's still back at square one, is the problem. He's drawn one card from his deck. There's a there's Lady Anaconda. Oh, okay. Never mind, never mind. There never mind. We're gonna see the, we're gonna see we're gonna see things drawn. Second Anaconda as well. Um, there's there's gonna be enough mana. Lightning Bloom. Okay. And 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 for good measure he can and for good measure he can definitely uh. And for good measure he's gonna be able to uh, alignment at the end of his turn potentially if he has the mana. But he uh, probably doesn't because you could I, mean, I think even I think. Justin having a turn next turn. I think I wanna. I think I wanna align to make sure he can't play anything at the end. Yeah, I don't know if Justin will have a turn next turn. And actually, uh, he doesn't have the mana to play anything. He's gonna. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he'll use it all. Well, I mean. And also, and also, there's a lot of health, and now there's, now there's uh, a lot of things coming down oh, here. Oh my god. Yep, and he is actually gonna end on an alignment. That's very smart. He's gonna make sure. Cause I guess I think cause I think I saw him play his alignment here. Yep, survival. Wow, there it is. Justin will have one mana, but he will not have enough to do anything to win. Mm, <clears> with right. double well, twenty twenty taunters in the way. Uh, yeah, those twenty twenty taunters can't go face, but they can clear two threes. Yes, they can. Um. So, yeah. <laughs> Wow. They can uh, they can certainly clear the the two threes and then uh, thirty damage can find its way face afterwards. Yes, that is going to be it. Wow. Wow. There you go. Barely threading the needle here for a huge turn from Rebob. Yeah. Just and a win in the match. Definitely, clutch when he needed it to be when he needed to be Robobson, um, taking the three to two win over always just in time. It's now a four to two um probably the other time probably the other score also being completed 
Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see if we can get Rebob out here. Uh, I, mean, yep. I assume we will. Yeah. But he is on a completely different time zone, so <laughs> he might be going to uh, to bed. Oh, he's it's eight. It's eight for him, so he should be good to do an, a little interview. And he's also like, <laughs> he's also got quite, quite the quite the sleep schedule. Um, but yeah. Um, and there he is, my, my, my Hello. captain. Hello. Howdy. Howdy. Howdy, Ooh. friend. What a series. Oh, God, yeah, that was tense. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What, what, uh, what inspired your decision to, uh, to go for the same exact play for the second game in a row there on that alignment druid, uh, saying, yeah, I'll overload, um, but <laughs> Not- I'll live through it this time. Not not knowing that there was an Earth Ellie in Justin's deck is probably why. <laughs> well, I, I, the, um, the rogue, it was kind of like, you know, I hadn't drawn any Lunar Eclipses, anything else to really do. So I was yeah. like, okay, if he's got the BGBM or a stab, I lose. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't, I've got that. Like, my hand was basically alignment or die. Yes. Against the rogue. So That's I was just right. like, fuck it. If I die, I die. I've still got the really good Druid versus Quest Shaman matchup. If it works, and I beat the Rogue, great. Yeah. Like, the the fact that I knew it was Quest Shaman versus Anaconda Druid Game 5 kind of influenced it a bit, because it was, yeah, it yeah, was yellow. You can, you can hedge into that, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can just say, I have, I have this really good matchup for me. And the second game, it was like there is there is no card he can play, like except maybe like um, if if on one mana he'd gone bloom, earth Ellie, like something else, the Dark River would have lost. But that's a really niche combination of cards. Yeah, I I didn't like because all his cards overloaded, and he would really struggle to complete the first stage of the quest with all his cards costing one. Mm-hmm. He was on was, out of three. It almost certainly won me the game the second time around. I agree. And, it did. and yeah. then I got like, absolute nonsense. And then the, you know, the the guidance giving the anaconda helped quite a bit. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't think you got there without the guidance giving you anaconda, but uh, I don't know. Potentially not. There's a lot of like. Um, then I could maybe have done something with the Mali into Bloom Bloom Guidance, try for it again with a much thinner deck. Yeah. But that, that, that turn with the Anaconda is always just, you know, you, you know the vague way you're going to take the turn depending on the different decision points. So it's always just like, all right, do, do, do the ramp nourish thing then look for the Anaconda, then just go. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's kind of just like, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah. discovering is always very stressful in that turn, because you're just like, um, Germination, that's good, yeah. <laughs> Co- like, Kodo Man had some merit, but I was just like, I don't have time to think about this right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, uh, Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think this match happened at the exact same time as another match. Yes. In, uh, uh, for your team? Yeah, so Titino's Pizza lost to Skirt 3 uh, 1. So it's. Uh, it's now. Yeah. It's six, now going to be 6 5. 6 5. Yeah. Just win. Yeah. Uh, yep. So they're slightly up, but um, you keep your win. Uh, like. From, from last time that the two teams faced off, you keep your win. Um, do you think that uh, that you are going, like, your team is going to uh, hold up on the other fronts there and uh, and take this week, or do you not yeah. have any... Uh... I can see it. I think we're in... It, I think the most important match now is Slard versus Wild Rose. Uh, like, in terms of class... Um, classes. Um, Infinite's probably feeling all right, and Thor's probably feeling all right, and that one is a bit of a, you know, it could go either way. 
I think the winner of Slard versus Wild Rose may win the week. But, you know, I believe in all my players. They're all fantastic. So we could just win two more on the bounce. We've got a couple more matches happening later on today. Gotcha. Uh, so, yeah. Um, Anthel is playing at 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. And then Mayan and Slad are both playing quite late tomorrow evening. So either way, it's not going to be decided until like late. Like it's not going to be decided till I am asleep. So I'm going to wake up on Monday and find out whether to bring the files or not. Yikes. Gotta love time zones. Yeah. Like, well, the, this is the worst part of the season in terms of time zones. Because it's always just like, I can either not sleep or while you know the important matches are happening or i'll be like uh or anyway I, it would be nice to not go out in a third consecutive semi-final this week i but... i really would that would really be nice to, to see for <laughs> the whole of f2l we, we are f- really really good oh. at losing playoffs uh-huh. We're very good at getting to playoffs, but you yeah, know. definitely. Oh yeah, uh, we've been consistent now. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're consistently inconsistent. That's that's the F two M all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, I, was, I was I was pretty happy with how that game panned out in terms of the classes. Mm-hmm. I was. I liked your classes going into it. It was similar yeah. to it. Was, I, it looked similar to what I had in Legacy last week. Not yeah. That common. Yeah, the, the Shaman was pretty sad for Justin, which was kind of the intention. Um, like, he, I was kind of hope, I was kind of like to him, well, you've either got to bring a bad deck in Agro Elemento Shaman into my classes, or you've just got to bring a really unfavored Shaman deck in Hope. And obviously, he brought the Quest Shaman because it's, it's decent into the Demon Hunter specifically, but then he, he whiffed on the matchup. If he managed to get the Shaman into the Demon Hunter game, one might have been a 3-2 in his favor. So I was pretty happy to get that one through. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of good matchups, um, why didn't you think that he was going to bring any weapon classes? Like... Uh... Like Doomhammer Shaman, like uh, the Poison Rogue potentially. Uh, there's or even Owl TK Warlock as he vipered against you. Well, I I kind of thought Poison Rogue was a possibility until he banned Hunter. Then I knew it was Quest Rogue because Quest Rogue was just. If he had an inkling of what I was going to bring, which I think he did, Quest Rogue was just good into all my classes. Yeah, makes sense. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually had Anaconda Druid himself, but Spell Druid was also just really good, so it could have just been that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he brought LTK, I was fine, because my I had a mirror and three decks that dumpstered it, so... Mm-hmm. I assumed he'd have Hand Warlock, because it was by far the best Warlock for him. And I generally think that better players just don't have any faith in Agri Elemento Shaman, because it's, it's not it's great. It's so inconsistent. Okay, well, well, from the better players that I've talked to, they do, so I don't know. Oh, it, it, it has, like, it's, you know, it's... Probably a decent deck to like try jamming in a qualifier, but like but its inconsistencies mean you really don't want to rely on it for a you know a one game sample size. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to let my my uh, my people know that yeah. uh, Reebok yeah. doesn't think they're good players. Yeah, well, but but um, the it, it's kind of like if it gets vipered, it usually loses. Yeah. Whereas Poison Rogue can. It gets there even if it gets oozed. LTK gets there even if it gets oozed. Mm-hmm. As I kind of showed. Yeah. <laughs> Just put a second rod. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
grabbing your second rod on turn one. Very, very good for uh, for the one Viper that we saw. But we did also yes. see something else from Justin that uh, you never got to see, which oh, is yes. uh, Curse of Agony. Yeah, uh, he had the Curse of Agony in his, in his Warlock deck. It was an interesting tech card. I wasn't sure exactly what it was for, but... I think it's just fairly solid in Handlock, to be perfectly yeah. honest with you. It's, it makes sense. It, it's, you know, was he running altars as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, um, the, the, the reason for that is because he, he had Druid up, and if I was playing Spell Druid, after Kazakhstan, if you go, like, altar, altar, Tamsin, agony, agony, you win. Yeah. Or if, uh, or if you went, you know, the long haul on the, um, on the, uh, the LSDH and, uh, you were drawing through your entire deck, then that can also probably work. Yeah. It's, it's also really, really good in the mirror. Um, if you get it there before they get to play times. <laughs> you know, obviously really, really bad post times in. <laughs> Definitely. All right. Well, right. with that, thank you for playing on stream. Thank you, you and Justin, for playing, and congratulations on winning. Best of luck to the to the teams moving forward. And um, you know, we'll see which one of we'll see which one of your teams goes on to face the cooler in the finals. So. Yeah. Not already confirmed. Shit, I haven't even been. Looking I'm pretty at the sure it's already. Yeah, uh, Bone Masher already like yeah. threw out the GGs in the in the it legacy. Was, uh, oh, it was it was a thrashing. It was it was a three three match game. Yeah, match. yeah, that's, that's oh, that's actually. Rough. actually <laughs> you you say that I I was I was very drunk last night and <laughs> like five a.m. saying. Something about the semi-final exit lounge, and I was like, "Yep, that's where F2L well is fucking live." Yeah, <laughs> sad. Uh, yeah. but hey, it's semis is respectable. Or it's just like the worst place. But I mean, it doesn't feel quite as bad as losing in the final, obviously. Hey, I uh, oh, I, at gosh. Least give, uh... I felt both in the last year, in the last two seasons. <laughs> at, at least if. Um... If Just Win does make it to playoffs, you have a very low chance of having to name your firstborn Justina uh, if they're facing the cooler. So, yeah, I mean, if they still get in Z and it wins, then uh, <laughs> I'll have a I'll have an interesting conversation with the answer to be honest, that's for sure. Anyways, but yeah, best of luck to yeah. both teams. You. Just Win are a very scary team, and I but this one's going to go to get the fifth series most I think so likely. Too. Yeah. So, fingers crossed we get there. But if yeah. not, we're a very good team. But Definitely. I believe in my boys. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, Thanks for having me on, gentlemen. Thank you. Of course. Enjoy your evenings. You as well. Good night. All right. And good night. Good night. All right. That's gonna do it for Saturday School Stone. Um, a fantastic match has come and went. Congratulations to Robobson. Thank you to both players for coming on stream. And um, we will be back later tonight with at least one match. In always just in time, we'll be back on stream. He'll be playing Genji in Hero Finals, and we have uh, quite the casting crew for that. So. Um, Look for, stay tuned for that at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, thank you, Geranium, for being available to cast with me. It was always a pleasure. And I would walk four miles. Yes. And I would walk, walk. four more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just to be here and cast this match. Yes. Oh, that, that made my day. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. We will see everyone later. Have a fantastic afternoon. And stay safe, everyone.